Hello, neighbors. Everyone, take a deep breath. We've done incredible work collectively over the past year, and especially over the past few months. I know this work has not been easy nor without sacrifice. I know it's been exhausting. I know some of us are worried about loved ones with asthma and diabetes. Some of us are itching to go back to church. Some of us are stressed about our small businesses. Others of us are worried about our jobs or rent. And all of us are missing family and friends and the way things used to be. I know none of us could have predicted that our world would change so drastically in 2020. I also know that the progress we've made in both improving our city and flattening the curve is only because of each and every one of us. So I want to start this state of the city by thanking you for the compassionate and sacrificial choices you have made. I especially want to thank all our essential workers and first responders for the bravery and poise they've shown in executing their jobs. The challenge before us moving forward is to build a new normal. And based on our performance thus far, I am more confident than ever that we are ready to meet that challenge. I also want to thank the City Council for the leadership they have shown. All of our city staff who have been working incredibly hard, and our new city manager, Harry Black, who has hit the ground running, managing the city well in this unprecedented time. And a big, big thank you to all of our other elected officials and San Joaquin County administration and staff. A year ago, my wife Anna was pregnant with our son. Today, Michael Malachi Tubbs Jr. is a happy seventh month old. And one day, I will tell Michael Jr. about this time and what it was like during the pandemic of 2020. This is a moment in history, albeit a very difficult one, but one that we will get through together. We have taken swift and decisive action to respond to the threat of COVID-19. I know it feels like a long time ago, but it was just on March 12th that we declared a state of emergency and approved a temporary ban on evictions. We followed that with on March 17th, creating a COVID response fund and approving temporary bans on the operation of movie theaters, entertainment venues, and gyms. On March 19th, Governor Newsom issued a statewide shelter in place order. And on March 21st, we launched StocktonStrong.org, a central hub where over 20,000 residents have found help with food, mental health, housing, and volunteer opportunities. On March 24th, we approved a temporary ban on commercial evictions, and none of these drastic actions were taken lightly. But with the realization that we had to lead, that we had to act to avoid the fate of cities like New York and, and countries like Italy, these drastic measures also necessitated innovative partnerships and community supports. So on April 2nd, I announced a partnership with Alice Waters to create Nourish Stockton, an effort that supports local farmers, the food bank, and our seniors. On April 7th, we announced a partnership with the governor and Verily to provide free drive-through COVID-19 testing to our residents. On April 14th, the council allocated $650,000 to support Project Roomkey, an initiative to help our homeless neighbors find shelter during this time. On April 16th, I made an announcement that I had raised a million dollars to launch the Stockton Strong Emergency COVID-19 Response Fund to support our small businesses and our nonprofits. On April 23rd, we announced a partnership with Main Street Launch to create the Stockton Small Business Relief Fund. On May 5th, we partnered with the Veterans Affairs to provide trailers for veterans who are homeless. And these collective efforts helped pave the way for the governor's approval of our county's plans to move more rapidly through phase two on May 21st. Our response to the pandemic has been comprehensive and also costly for the city. This is why I joined with every other mayor in San Joaquin County to ask county officials to allocate some of the $133 million in COVID-19 relief funds it received from the federal government to cities like Stockton on the front lines of this crisis. The city of Stockton is 45% of the county's population and 52% of all COVID cases. And we need the resources to continue to support our first responders, our nonprofit, our small businesses, and you. Our response to this pandemic is enabled by the strong foundation we've established in prior years. Evidence of this is in our proposed budget for this upcoming year. This budget is balanced and it will include, as of today, no layoffs, no cuts to staff salaries, no cuts to services, and no new furloughs. This strong pre-COVID foundation is also illustrated in the momentum we built pre-COVID. 
In the past year, we've removed over 780,000 square feet of graffiti and 75,000 tons of trash from our streets. We opened over 2,000 new businesses and brought in over 2,000 new jobs. We partnered with Governor Newsom to use surplus state land to build affordable housing. We joined the Big City Mayor's Coalition, which gave us access to the funding needed to address homelessness. We doubled our winter shelter capacity at the Stockton Shelter for the Homeless and the Gospel Center Rescue Mission. We broke ground on the long-awaited VA clinic. We saved Swinson, allowing Swinson to stay a golf course and also allowing the city to save taxpayer dollars. We were awarded $8.5 million from the state to reinvent McKinley Park, and we even fixed our Weber Point feature. So it's ready to work as soon as we are able to have such gatherings again. And we will have such gatherings again, eventually. The challenge before us, however, is to work collectively to create our new normal, a path forward that both saves lives and livelihoods. We are progressing through phase two of four, and that is an important milestone. To continue to move forward, however, we must continue to be vigilant. We must continue to avoid non-essential travel. We must continue to avoid large social gatherings. We must continue to practice social distancing. We must continue to wash our hands. We must continue to wear masks while in public. And I'd like to thank Dr. Maggie Park for serving as our public health officer during this time. And I have asked the doctor that as we open up, that she make the wearing of mask in public a requirement so that we can continue to mitigate the spread of this virus while we relax restrictions. Yes, staying at home has not been easy, but if there's one thing I know about our community, is that nothing we achieve is easy. We are tough, we are gritty, and we are committed to each other. We know about tough times and how to face them, together with focus and resilience. In this moment, we might be facing uncertainty, but we will continue to choose community in the midst of our crisis. And because of that, the state of our city is stocked and strong. Stocked and strong is most clearly embodied and being a good neighbor. And during this time, I've seen countless examples of this, including the United Way, who is organizing support for our, our shelters, the Lord's Gym City Center, who has been feeding thousands of families, Damar Johnson and his organization Balloons Over Bullets, who have been providing toys and ice cream to our children, Jean Wall, taking care of our Chinese elders, our AmeriCorps volunteers, who are working through the Nurse Stockton program, and delivering over 2,000 pounds of food every week to our seniors, our Sikh community, and creating a community pantry for folks who access for food, Dr. Nabil Keiji, who's created the Print to Protect Coalition and is printing 3D masks for essential workers, Michael Duffy, his family, and the Financial Center Credit Union, who donated a million dollars to support organizations like the Food Bank and St. Mary's Dining Hall and the Women's Center, and of course, our medical professionals working long hours, Nurses like Takiya Watts, who works here at our Kaiser in Stockton, or Sydney, who works at our Stockton Pharmacy. In fact, all of our essential workers, from grocery clerks to migrant workers to warehouse distributors, have stepped up to provide service to our community in this time of need. And our police officers, our firefighters, and our violent prevention outreach workers have all continued to go above and beyond in service to the public. Your acts of kindness and generosity are too many to count. I'm grateful for a community like ours, a community where we see our neighbor not as someone to fear, but as a reflection of ourselves. I also want to take a moment to tell the class of 2020 and their parents just how proud I am of them. We all missed the usual graduation ceremonies, but it's inspiring to see you all make lemonade from these lemons. In the midst of this disappointment, I hope you all take heed to an important lesson my Nana taught me, that all things work together. You are graduating into a new world, a world that will have great need for your vision, your drive, your skills, your contributions. Your stories are just beginning, and you will have the opportunity to create the society that you deserve. Stick with your goals and follow your dreams. Congratulations also to all of our Stockton scholars who are going to continue their education I look forward to congratulating you virtually on our fourth annual college signing day on July 1st. In the midst of this pandemic, we will continue the significant gains we have seen in our public safety efforts. 2019 saw back-to-back -back years with less than 40 homicides. 
the first time that has happened in our city in over a decade. Today, that trend continues as we are seeing a 40% reduction in non-fatal injury shootings this year. In addition to the great enforcement work of our police department, our Office of Violence Prevention Peacekeepers have proven to be essential workers during this time, delivering food and public health messages to the over 75 guys and communities that they serve. The Advanced Peace Program and their outreach team has also delivered food to communities in need and the clients that they serve. These leaders are doing thankless and amazing work, helping to reduce tension and re avoid conflict in some of our most impacted neighborhoods. But sadly, our domestic violence numbers have increased, which is unacceptable. Accordingly, we have dedicated additional funds and resources to our Women's Center. And if you need help, please call law enforcement and know that the Women's Center is still open. In January, we welcome our new homegrown fire chief, Chief Edwards. And our firefighters last year responded to over 51,000 calls for service and recently have led Stockton's emergency response effort, coordinating with other agencies, including the National Guard, deploying testing, making sure we have volunteers at our food banks, and serving on outreach teams to our homeless encampments. We must continue to make public safety a priority and support our police and firefighters, ensuring that they have the personnel and equipment needed to keep our community safe. Homelessness and housing affordability were a crisis before COVID-19, and today we're continuing our focus on reducing the number of our neighbors who are without shelter, and also ensuring that everyone who calls Stockton home can find shelter that is affordable. To that end, I'm excited to announce that through our Stockton Strong Fund, we will grant $150,000 to Central Valley Low Income Housing, San Joaquin Fair Housing, and California Rural Legal Assistance. With these funds, they will be able to provide rental assistance and hire additional staff to make sure that they're able to continue helping our neighbors. As we know, the best way to prevent homelessness is to not allow someone to become homeless in the first place. And that's why I'm calling upon my council to enact an extension on our eviction moratorium. Our current protections are set to expire June 16th without council action. I'm also calling on the council to support Senate Bill 1410, which would help landlords by providing temporary financial assistance for renters. This year, we created homelessness outreach teams, a collaborative effort with Stockton Fire, Stockton Police, and San Joaquin County agencies. Our hot teams go out on the streets, they educate our homeless neighbors about the coronavirus, and clean up blighted areas of our city. Additionally, through my advocacy, Stockton is now part of the Big City Mayor's Coalition, which last year helped earn our city $6.5 million to address homelessness. These dollars will come this summer, but as you know, we simply can't throw money at this complex issue. To that end, the city and the county have also partnered on a strategic plan on homelessness, and I'm urging both bodies to ratify and implement as soon as possible. I'm also calling on the city and county to use our homelessness funds to expand low barrier shelter capacity and create a pet friendly navigation center, to invest in prevention, to increase the supply of affordable housing, and to implement a housing first model. In taking such a comprehensive approach, we'll be able to triage, reduce the number of people on our streets, and assure that our neighbors have what they need to live with dignity. Substance abuse and mental health treatment when appropriate, case management, and most importantly, an actual roof over their heads. And I know you agree that the status quo is untenable and that we have to be ambitious. With the right focus and the right use of resources, we can end chronic homelessness in our community. To end chronic homelessness in our county, we need 609 additional beds of permanent supportive housing. And I wanna be very clear, we will reach that goal by 2024. Small businesses are the lifeblood of our city, and I know that at this time our small businesses are hurting and are looking for relief. In response to this need, we allocated $350,000 from our general fund, and I raised an additional $150,000 on top of that to create the Small Business Relief Grant Program. Within 24 hours of our announcement, we received over 1,000 applications. We were able to help 167 small businesses like House of Ice Cream, 
Mi Ranchito Cafe, and Music Around, as opposed to what we saw the federal government do, with their support going to small businesses like the LA Lakers. We know that the need is great, that businesses are struggling, and as funds become available, it is imperative and a priority that we continue and expand our small business support. As we move towards phase two, and eventually into phase three, it is paramount that we also equip our small businesses with the supplies they need to ensure the safety of their employees and their customers. So today, I am pleased to announce that I will be providing 14,000 masks to support our local small businesses and their employees as they start to reopen. In the interest of public health, we will have to do business differently. Stockton will continue to become an even more business-friendly city, and we are committed to working closely with our small businesses during this time of transition. Furthermore, we are committed to shortening the time it takes for permits as part of our efforts to make the city more efficient and transparent. This year, City Manager Black is creating an Office of Data and Performance Analytics, which will allow residents to see real-time data on everything from code enforcement to trash cleanups. To further support our business community, we have launched a Stockton Strong Marketplace in partnership with Stock Market. This online market, by and for women entrepreneurs, will help all of us shop local and provide further economic opportunities for female-owned and operated businesses in the city of Stockton. COVID-19 has impacted all of us, especially women. Women are on the front lines of this crisis as they are more likely to hold essential jobs, generally do most of the domestic labor at home and caregiving, and some even do all three as their primary breadwinner and only parent. As I said in my State of the City speech two years ago, women's issues are Stockton's issues. We know that Stockton has a high number of resilient single mothers who during COVID-19 are acting as mom and dad and teacher and essential worker. That's why on Mother's Day, we gave 120 single moms a $500 economic stimulus. These funds were given out unconditionally, allowing each mother to use the funds as they saw fit. One mother, Ariana, has an eight-month-old baby and was laid off from work due to COVID-19. Now she's driving for DoorDash and will use the money to pay for diapers, wipes, formula, food. Another mother has three sons one of which whom has autism. She is still working through this crisis as a nurse aide and is using the money to make sure her kids' basic needs are met. This pandemic has also shown us the need for affordable and accessible childcare. And that's why today I'm pleased to announce a partnership with the Blue Shield Foundation and Family Resource and Referral Center to expand childcare for essential workers and support 1,000 childcare slots. Before this public health crisis, we realized that too many of our neighbors were living in an economic crisis that COVID-19 has only further exacerbated. That's why in October 2017, we announced, and in February 2019, we started the nation's first basic income pilot, giving 125 randomly selected Stockton families $500 a month. Our guaranteed income program, the Stockton Economic Empowerment Demonstration, or SEED, has become a national model for how we care for one another, especially in times of crisis. Early data from this program confirms what we've always known to be true. We are working incredibly hard, but the economy isn't working for us. And because SEED's recipients are people just like you and me, they're spending money in the ways just like you and I would, on necessities. Nearly 40% of money is spent on food, another 22% on sales and merchandise, 11% on utilities, and 10% on auto care. When we first launched our SEED program, the idea of a guaranteed income was seen as too far-fetched, too radical for many people nationwide, and even on your social media feeds. However, today, leaders from across the world, from House Speaker Nancy Pelosi to the Pope, are considering the need for a basic income and are looking to Stockton, California as the model. And that's why I'm so excited to announce today that we will be extending seed by six months with disbursements now ending in January 2021, thanks to the generosity of the philanthropic community. 
This pandemic will not stop the promise of our city, and we're stocked and strong because of the amazing residents that call our city home. So before closing, I want to acknowledge just a couple of them with the key to the city. First, I want to give a key to the city to Michael Duffy and family for your tireless work in our community. Mr. Duffy's work with the Financial Center Credit Union started back in 1993, and his commitment to the community and generosity of spirit is illustrated in how he, his family, and his bank have stepped up during this time when the community needed him the most. The second key goes to Jinwa Inc., a social service agency located in the heart of the city of Stockton and what was once a thriving Chinatown. Jinhua has been serving the social service needs of our Chinese American community for over 44 years, and they have doubled those efforts as a result of COVID-19. The third key to the city goes to Garvik Singh Sangara and the volunteers of the Sikh Pantry. Thank you for your commitment to Stockton and for helping those in need during this pandemic. Finally, the last key to the city is fittingly a digital one. This key is to honor every essential worker in our city. You can claim your key by going to StocktonStrong.org. As we look towards the future, we do so knowing that there are things that will be beyond our control. Accordingly, each and every one of us has to focus and take ownership on what we can control and contribute to allow us to emerge from this crisis stronger. Now is not the time for grandstanding or denialism, but it is the time to treat this public health issue with the seriousness and gravity it deserves. We can continue to move forward if everyone does their part by washing our hands, limiting non-essential travel, wearing masks when out in public, practicing social distancing, getting tested, and staying home when we are sick. We have already shown that when we do these things, we can keep our community safe. We know that as we open up, there will be a need for contact tracing, and we can all play a part in this effort by doing something that many of us do anyway, by downloading an app. I'm excited to announce a new partnership with Citizen Safe Trace app in San Joaquin County that will allow residents to help stop the spread of COVID-19 in a way that ensures privacy. In closing, scripture reminds us not to get weary in well-doing, for in due season we will reap a harvest if we faint not. With the sacrifices we are making, we are planting seeds for a resilient city that will emerge from this pandemic stocked and strong and as a model for others to follow. Again, none of us saw this coming. We can't control the beginning, but now we have the pen and together we will write this next chapter. This next chapter of a city that emerges more resilient, more cohesive, in a city that is truly Stockton strong. Stockton, we are no stranger to hard times, and yet each and every time we rise. In 2012, we were the largest city to declare bankruptcy, and still we rose, and are now the second most fiscally healthy city in the state. Stockton, in 2012, we were ranked the most miserable city in this country. And still we rose and have been named an all-American city two of the last three years. In 2020, we are facing COVID-19 and Stockton still we will rise. We will do it together. And in this process, we will lean into what makes us Stockton strong in the first place, our care and our concern for each other. So thank you. God bless you. God bless Stockton. And God bless the United States of America.